Overtime with Johnny Kane. Johnny, are you ready? Let's go. Most exciting game that you have ever seen in person? 2008 National Championship, KU over Memphis in overtime. So if you could have a verified check on Twitter for any other reason than being a broadcaster, what would be your reason? All my nieces and nephews, there are six of them now, but five of them are under the age of, let me see, one, two, three. And they call me Spunkle for Sports Uncle. And so I would want a blue check mark for being the best Spunkle there ever was. Maybe the only one. Did you ever consider the phrase whammy? I did not. If you want your own catchphrase, I always say it should just happen naturally. It's gotta be as good, if not better than whammy. One shoe for the rest of your life. What are you Oh, Jordan 13. He got games. Oh, specific. He's Guys the Limit by Lil Wayne. Lost one by Jay-Z. Lil Boosie. I'm gonna wipe me down. I'm so thankful that Lil Wayne released No Ceiling. Hey, bro, he, he changed up the Kobe Bryant song. I like yes. that. I like yes, he did. I've never put in a curling iron in it. I do like to get braids. I let my mom like French braid it or get like double dutch braids. I've worn that in public before, so. Is Turn Clay Matthews your hair inspo? For sure. What is the best present that you've ever received and what's the best present that you've ever given? Best present I've ever received. One day you have to go on to either your favorite movie or your favorite TV show and then you have to be the favorite character. Who are you gonna be? What movie or TV show are you going to be in? 51st Dates, I'm Adam Sandler. Eat one food for the rest of your life. What food are you picking? Probably noodles. Any <laughs> toppings? Them. Well, do I get toppings? Yeah, you Parmesan get cheese, toppings. butter, okay. butter noodles, yeah. Everyone does the butter noodles. I I have to have sauce. Like, I can't I really- I like butter. I like plain. I'm not a plain girl, I'm a sauce girl. One's gotta go Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook. Twitter, for sure. Twitter. You like Twitter. I, I love Twitter. Twitter's the best ever. Earlier today, I got the chance to sit down with manager of the Tigers, Ron Gardenhire, about who he thinks needed the All-Star break the most, mentally, physically, and emotionally. And his answer might surprise you. Hey, Braves fans. My name's Abby Jones. I'm here at the Battery. And today, the Braves are playing the Orioles, but they are away. However, we've got a crowd out here in the Battery, and they actually just scored. So the Braves, oh, really? yeah, the Braves are doing well. So we have got Steve here. Hi, Steve. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. He says that he has been a lifelong Braves fan. So we're gonna put that knowledge to the test. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Yes. I feel like you might be a little more in the age range of the questions. I feel like the people that I've asked we're before, okay. they say that they're really a lifelong Braves fan, but it's really not true. All right. All right, are you ready? Yes. Okay. What was the most recent Atlanta Braves appearance in the World Series? Uh, 95? Close. Okay. Now, 95 was a big year, but it's 1999. Okay, all right. All right. Yeah. We won in 95. That was the next question. So you won in 1995. Right. Who did you beat? Indians. We won Indians. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, so the last time that the Atlanta Braves had the number one pick in the MLB draft was in what year? Uh, Triple Jones. Yes. Uh, He's really the fan. <laughs> <laughs> He's got it. All right, guys, back to you. Well, I guess that Ron Gardenhire was right about Candelario. He is 50% of our offense scored here against the Boston Red Sox. And if this is any indication about what Candelario is going to look like for the rest of the season, you might want to rethink your pick the stick choices. Over to you. Hello, I'm Abby Jones. Welcome to Tigers Live and the Call Sam Studios. There were some really nice plays made around the league last night. A couple of them came at Progressive Field in Cleveland during the Reds' win over the Indians. First, check out this beauty from Cleveland outfielder Tyler Naquan. He goes all out to take extra bases away from the Reds' Scooter Jeanette. Take another look. Full extension from Naquan to make a great catch. Jeanette would get his revenge, though. Guys, what is this rookie pitcher's mindset, his momentum going into this game? 
The best highlight last night didn't come from any game, though. It came courtesy of the Giants' Derek Holland and Hunter Pence, who put together a little campaign video to try and help their teammate, Brandon Belt, earn the final spot on the National League All-Star team. Let's take a look. Listen here, brother. The second half of the season has been underway for just over a week now, which means the youngsters of this Tigers team have just over two more months to showcase what they have. Who has the pressure on them? We'll take a look when we come back from Tigers Live. And you are the player representative for the Pistons with the NBPA, so you have an extra responsibility and obligation to your teammates. So can you talk a little bit about that? Like, how are you kind of correlating all the information with that side to the players? Yeah, I try to be able to be the kind of middleman between both. It's, it's really bringing our family together, having him as, as like the, the focal point. Yeah, that's super sweet. And those are like the moments that, you know, you cherish and you're always going to think about and reflect back to. Um, yep. But you've said, like, this is a movement. It's not just a moment. So the what we're going through right now is literally history. It's going to be in the textbooks. And, like, one day your son will learn uh, about the year 2020. And there's going to be 25 pages in the chapter. But um, <laughs> how special is it that you are doing something that you can look back and tell your kid, like, hey, I didn't just sit around. Like, I was actually really involved and I use my platform. So what is like the one thing that you're most proud of that one day your son's going to look back at this time and ask what was your biggest accomplishment? Um, I, and, and I really can't say the philanthropy side of it all because, you know, that's, that's just, that's just my ethics. Like that. But we definitely want to give a shout out. So um, check out links in social media on Lang Galloway 10, LG Kicks 9, and of course the links in GallowayFoundation.org. Um, yep. Get involved, donate, and just, if you're not inspired after this podcast to make a difference, then I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm going to retire from podcasting <laughs> in 2030. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Podcasts are canceled if that doesn't happen. If you had one teammate, past or present, to babysit your son, who in the world, if any, would you allow to do that um you know what i'll probably go uh to make it funny i'll probably go blake blake you know blake has two kids he he probably could do a good job with little man he do a good job you know i'm gonna throw in a baton rouge artist uh little boosie uh i'm gonna go uh wipe me down i'm gonna wipe me down okay and i'm so thankful that little wayne released no ceilings on i mean i had him on like and some apps that are questionable but just to be able to listen to that with no Wi-Fi or internet. Hey, bro. Especially he, he changed up the Kobe Bryant song. I like yes. that. I like that. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So, Louisiana or Detroit? Oh, come on now. Louisiana. <laughs> so, Brooke, I mean, keeping up with you during COVID was probably one of my favorite things to do. Um, and most recently, you hosted the Pistons draft party. I mean, is that the yeah. highlight of your career so far? Gosh, it definitely up there. When they asked me, I like did a double take on the email and I was like, wait a second. I was like, you want me to, you want me to host it? It's your third year now in Valley. Can I you mean, believe that? Three years? When did, I, we bet you were, what? Was it my first year there when you it were It was your intern? first year. I think you came okay. in like halfway through my internship. Um, and they were like, we've got a new girl. Her name's Brooke. And I was like, can't wait to meet her. Um, a new so girl at school. Yeah, so I kind of came in on the beginning of your season because I was there during school. So I was only there for about three months. But yeah, I think we we went to some subway shop and you were like, let's just talk about Detroit. Oh, yeah, we did. Just a, just a little bit down the road from, from work. I know it's um, mm -hmm. probably when I was a junior in high school as well. And he actually made his first trip to Detroit to do like sweet visits. And then that turned into like a pregame you know, show, he'd kind of hop on. So I went with him on his first trip and I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. And I actually have a photo with like Matt Shepard and I'm like 15 years old. Wow. And I was like, this is crazy, you know, and years Matt. later, like I have a photo with Matt Shepard and I did, you know, so he's a legend here. He's been here for years. Yeah. So it's Doing like it for years. 
it's funny to just kind of see like life come full circle because right so Detroit was the first place that I was at when I was born and then that was the last place that my dad played when he retired so you know it was when I did my internship there I was like this just makes so much sense <laughs> yeah no I, I I get completely get that and I going back to Comerica because my dad he finished his career here and um yeah it, it brought back so many memories yeah it, it's crazy yeah and you can probably attest to this just how different the world of sports is from when our dads played to now I mean there was an Instagram oh, yeah wasn't even you know barely flip phones then so do you think that seeing any part of your dad's career in the past kind of contributed to what you want to do in the future or was it more so him coaching now because he's an active coach correct right yeah mm -hmm. he's actually in in South Korea right now, uh, coaching with the team there, major league team there. Um, so complete, like the way God works, it's crazy. And all right. This one, this one may, may be a little much, but favorite uh -oh. Detroit rapper. Are you going to go OG Ooh, Eminem this is controversial or are you going to go big Sean? All right, Johnny Kane. So how are you doing? Well, I'm living, you know, trying to put one foot in front of the other every day, but, um, uh... I'm good. I'm good. You yeah, your good? view doesn't your view doesn't look bad. I know. Well, I uh, I <laughs> I should have probably put a better shirt on, but uh, I'm actually back home where I grew up. And so after watching other people, I mean, I honestly do the same. And another great trick is like muting the volume and then having closed captions actually, and trying to kind of like not even hear anything and do it yourself, mm -hmm. which is incredibly hard. I'm like. Oh my gosh, I see what's going on, but like, how do I describe everything yeah, that's going I, on? But how yeah. do you how do you watch so many people and not copy them, but learn to like find your own style? And then, how long into your career did you feel like, okay, like this is Johnny Kane's style, and like this is something that I do when I report that I'm really comfortable with? Like, can you talk a little bit about kind of finding your style? Yeah, no, that's really good. It's a really good point because. You can't, you can emulate other people a little bit or you can pull stuff. It's like when. So I know that you have picked up a new hobby of painting chairs and everything. <laughs> um, and it could, I mean, could be a side gig if, if, you know, 2020 doesn't kind of shape up a little bit, <laughs> but. Um, look, I can do it. I know they look, they look good, but we're also uh, pretty far away. <laughs> um, Johnny's going to be designing one of those new giant chairs into people because I feel like you know everyone in their mind puts these types of athletes like Kareem and Michael and Char like all these people on a unnatural unhuman realm and you in that moment like did it ever enter your mind I am good enough to be on the same court as these people like can you explain a little bit of that feeling where did you still feel like that 15 year old boy like oh my gosh this is kareem abdul jabbar like what am i gonna do or were you like okay like i deserve to be here i've got skin in the game and like you know what i'm saying you know so and so is my teammate it's just it was it was really it was really fun so you probably got some great like two truths and a lie <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, 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 I'll answer anything you want, but I'm not playing two truths and a lie with you. <laughs> <laughs> but me and my dad for years and years, um, we kind of had like a basketball court. And so he and I would always play basketball after dinner and he'd rebound for me. Mm -hmm. So when I was like seven years old, he made me like claim my sweet spot. So in another life, um, I think I would have been a basketball player, but I just, I got started a little bit too late. Yeah, where was your sweet spot? And, and also where did you cheer in college? I cheered at Stanford University um, all four years. And then, I mean, I just, I really hate to brag, but kind of like anywhere behind the three. So how much do you think that you learned from your family and how much do you think that you had to learn on your own? Uh, a lot, a lot in both cases. So you said that in this day and age, it's a lot harder for young broadcasters to get started, which Lauren, I don't know about you, but I feel I agree with that. You know, there, there's so many people competing for the one spot. So mm -hmm. did you have a lot of mentors along the way? Like what, what was something that you would give advice to this generation about wanting to get into this industry where there is very little room for error? 
Yeah, I, the error part is, is certainly true. So it's been good timing and a walk down memory lane for you, I'm sure, with Long Gone Summer and The Last Dance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Chicago's been on your mind lately. Um, can you just explain the electricity of the 98 season? And like you said, you know, you have to take over the microphone that your grandfather used. I mean, that has to be a pretty historic and sobering moment in your career. So can you just talk yeah. about the obstacles yeah, it was hard. you faced? Uh, it was hard because, again, uh, Chicago's a, an interesting city, obviously. Um, and uh, we didn't so you were there with, we with Shaquille O'Neal? I was there with Shaquille O'Neal. Yes, I'm I was there. That was, years, that was a couple of years. That was yeah, that was yeah. a couple of years later, right? <laughs> um. Hey, Stanford fans, and welcome back to another great week of the Blitz. I just have to say, I'm so excited that we have another season in store for you guys. Because honestly, it wasn't looking too promising. It's a surprise for all of us, but we're super glad to be back. Welcome back. Abs, have you been to a volleyball game lately? I actually have been to a few, and I might add that they are on a win streak they're, at home. They're crazy good. <laughs> Up next, we have the biggest guest that we have ever had on the Blitz. He is a six-foot, 339-pound defensive tackle for the Baltimore Ravens, number 78, Michael Pierce. Dirk, over to you. Welcome back to another great week of the Blitz. I'm Abby Jones, and first I just have to say it's a really beautiful <laughs> Gorgeous. It's sunny and 75. So I'm sure that you've heard of the Ball Brothers up in UCLA. Well, we have our own set of brothers here, TJ and Troy Dixon, on the baseball team, and we have an interview coming up with them shortly. Which also reminds me of a segment that's about to come up that I'm pretty excited about. When you think of one, you think of the other. The, the dynamic, dynamic duo, duo the, the Dixon, Dixon brothers. brothers. Dirk, over to you. Sanford hosted their last home game against Mercer this weekend, and it was senior night as we recognized 21 seniors at their homecoming game. Yep, Brian Hill sat down with head men's basketball coach Scott Padgett, and Johnny Richards previews this upcoming week's football game with Mike Grace. All of that and more when we come back. Second semester is coming to a close here at Stanford, and that means graduation. What do our graduates have planned? After that, we'll be giving you the scoop on what you just can't seem to escape on Stanford's campus. All that and so much more this week on SNN. Hello, my name is Abby Jones, and welcome to this week's matchup of Stanford Game Day. Tonight, the Stanford Bulldogs are hosting the Auburn Tigers at Joe Lee Griffin Field, and the Stanford Bulldogs are going into this game 19 and 14 overall, 7 and 2 in the conference. And although this is not a conference matchup, this has the potential to be a headline for the Stanford Bulldogs as this is an in-state matchup. Lee Griffin Field, the Stanford Bulldogs pulled off a huge upset against the Auburn Tigers. Jack, what do you think about that game tonight? Uh, I thought it was awesome. Uh, Coach Dunn told me we had over 2,000 people here. Uh, well, most of them were wearing Auburn's colors. I really felt like they were pulling for, for Sanford. But, uh, you know, it's just great to see our guys come out and put up another double-digit hit streak right. and uh, continue that winning streak now to number nine. Right. And coming again out of the gate, Sanford just led the board offensively. I mean, it was absolutely first inning. One, second inning, two, three, four. You know, it just kept going and on and on. Honestly, at one point, I was like, will Auburn ever catch up? This past Tuesday, the Sanford Bulldogs hosted the Auburn Tigers and had a huge victory, 12 to three. You can head over to the Sanford Baseball Twitter and check out the recap there. Hey Sanford, and welcome to the fifth episode of the Bulldog Blitz. I'm Kelsey Royalty. And I'm Abby Jones. This week, we've had some great Sanford matchups and some even better highlights to show you guys, don't we, Kelsey? We sure do. We're going to show you a little bit of VMI at Sanford football, more in-season SOCON women's volleyball play, men's and women's cross country at Alabama, and last but not least, Sanford women's soccer senior night. Take a look. Friday night, October 14th, was one of the more special moments of the season, and it was not only senior night, but additionally, it was the night of fundraising for the Shauna House, an enduring charity honoring Coach Yelton's late wife Shauna who lost her battle with cancer last year. $13,000 were raised for the charity. Sanford would win the game with a score of 2-1 featuring two penalty kick goals from senior forward Jermaine Sia Pasenwe. The Bulldog seniors have already compiled a remarkable 51-22 and 5 overall record and a 25-6 and 2 mark in the SOCON play as well as the high profile victories against Tennessee, Vanderbilt, Alabama, Baylor, Wake Forest, Memphis and Auburn twice. Thank you guys. We are here with TJ and Troy Dixon at Joe Lee Griffin. And guys, it is so nice to have you here. Thanks I'm for so excited us. for this segment. Oh, I know yeah. we wanted to do it like all semester long, so I'm happy that it's finally here. Oh yeah. So um, we just have a few funny questions for you guys. So we're just gonna kind of like ask 30 seconds of questions and whatever pops in your head, like just say it. Another ground rule has to be completely honest. No, doing it for the camera. Just <laughs> first thing that comes to your mind. Let's go. Okay. So you guys are really superstitious. Um, 
If you had <laughs> to, like, if you couldn't play a baseball game without one thing, what would it be? Gum. 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 Wow. Big League Chew? Big League Chew. Yeah. Gotta go Big Bubble League gum. Chew. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm a seeds guy. Like, seeds I need, guys? I need my sunflower seeds. Okay. Nice. Solid. Solid. Good choice. All right, veering off the baseball topic for a second, um, ideal first date, go. Uh, I'm trying to hit the movies, you know, Ooh. watch a good one, a comedy. Okay. We could laugh about it at dinner, you feel me? Yeah, yeah, nice. that's a nice one. Uh, I'm more of a dinner guy, so, you know, cheesecake, if you're really trying to impress her. Cheesecake. You know what I mean? Uh, even the Reese's, I uh, recommend the Reese's cheesecake, by the way. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. Good to know. Just um, so, you guys, big men on campus baseball team brothers everybody knows the Dixon duo <laughs> Sanford ratio there are a lot more girls than guys it's real it's I, I never noticed that actually it's, real. <laughs> oh, really? it's pretty real to us it's, it's real we, we promise if there were a few girls that wanted to you know get in contact with you what should we tell them how can we we let our audience know. I mean, you definitely got to get with our people first. Oh, the people. yeah. Once, okay. once you, once, Your people uh, call their people. Oh, yeah. Once yeah, you yeah, get yeah. with our we'll people, then yeah. if the okay. cal calendar is not so. balances. Right. Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Good to know. Or Snapchat. Or Snapchat? Okay. Is that the move? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Got to learn about Snapchat. All right. Well, you've heard it here first. Thank you all so much for your time. No we wish problem. you rest of the luck in the season. Thank you. And good luck in the draft. Thank you. Back to you.